What's his name then? No. No. Hey, Marvel fans, ready for a wild ride through the Venom verse? Venom 3. The Last Dance is just about to release, so I thought we should go on a ride with previous movies. What do you think? Welcome back to your nerdy show. I'm your host, Spoiler Master. In this video, we're diving deep into the chaotic world of Eddie Brock and his symbiote partner, Venom. We'll recap the epic events of Venom, 2018, and Venom, Let There Be Carnage, 2021. So grab your popcorn and let's get started. Raider. Have a nice life. Venom 2018. In a thrilling quest for new worlds capable of supporting life, a probe from the bioengineering giant Life Foundation stumbles upon a comet teeming with symbiotic organisms. Upon its return to Earth, the probe brings back four samples, but one of these life forms breaks free, resulting in a catastrophic crash in Malaysia. The Life Foundation manages to secure the remaining three samples and transports them to their high-tech research facility in San Francisco. There, scientists uncover a shocking truth. The symbiotes require oxygen-breathing hosts to survive, but the bond often proves deadly for the human subjects. Meanwhile, investigative journalist Eddie Brock uncovers classified information about these dangerous human trials through his fiancée, Anne Wying, who is an attorney working on a lawsuit against the Life Foundation. When Eddie confronts the company's CEO, Carlton Drake, about the unethical experiments, both he and Anne find themselves unemployed. This turmoil leads Anne to end their relationship and engagement, leaving Eddie to grapple with the fallout. Six months have passed, and Drake's experiments with symbiosis are inching closer to a breakthrough. However, tragedy strikes when one of his symbiotes perishes due to negligence. Meanwhile, Eddie encounters Dora Skirth, a scientist working under Drake, who is deeply troubled by his unethical practices and is determined to bring his actions to light. Together, they hatch a plan to infiltrate the research facility in search of incriminating evidence. During their mission, Eddie discovers that a familiar face, a homeless woman named Maria, is among the test subjects. In a desperate attempt to save her, Eddie inadvertently becomes the new host for the symbiote that had been inside Maria, resulting in her untimely death. As he makes his escape, Eddie begins to experience bizarre and unsettling symptoms. Seeking assistance, he turns to Anne, but it's her new partner, Dr. Dan Lewis who uncovers the truth about the symbiote during his examination of Eddie. In a shocking turn of events, Drake subjects Skirth to the last remaining symbiote, leading to their demise. This leaves the symbiote within Eddie as the sole survivor of the experiments. In a thrilling turn of events, Drake dispatches a team of mercenaries to seize the symbiote from Eddie. However, the symbiote envelops Eddie, transforming him into a fearsome creature that fiercely repels the attackers. It soon reveals itself as Venom, informing Eddie that a comet is on a quest to find planets for the symbiotes to invade and consume their inhabitants. Venom proposes a deal. If Eddie assists the symbiotes in their mission, he will be spared. Empowered by the symbiotes' extraordinary abilities, Eddie decides to infiltrate his former workplace to present evidence of Drake's nefarious activities. But as he attempts to expose the truth, he finds himself cornered by SWAT officers. Witnessing Eddie's transformation to escape, Anne rushes him to Dan's office, where they uncover that the symbiote is deteriorating Eddie's internal organs. Eddie realizes that the symbiote has two critical vulnerabilities, high-frequency sounds and fire. While Venom insists that the organ damage can be healed, Anne utilizes an MRI machine to separate the two, leading to Eddie's capture by Drake's men. In a thrilling turn of events, the fourth symbiote, known as Riot, embarks on a journey from Malaysia to San Francisco, seamlessly transferring from one host to another. It ultimately merges with Drake, who is eager to take Riot aboard a Life Foundation space probe to retrieve the remaining symbiotes and bring them back to Earth. Meanwhile, Anne finds herself reluctantly bonding with Venom through a dog, enabling them to rescue Eddie. Once reunited, Eddie and Venom reaffirm their partnership, with Venom vowing to defend Earth from its own kind, inspired by its bond with Eddie. Together, they join forces with Anne to confront Riot and Drake. In an epic showdown, Venom inflicts damage on the probe during its launch, resulting in a catastrophic explosion that claims the lives of both Riot and Drake. 
In the aftermath, Eddie resumes his career in journalism, while Anne mistakenly believes that Eddie has severed ties with Venom and that Venom perished in the blast. Unbeknownst to her, Eddie and Venom remain secretly connected, ready to take on the criminal underworld of San Francisco. In a thrilling mid-credits moment, Eddie receives an unexpected invitation to interview the notorious serial killer, Cletus Cassady, who ominously hints at the chaos he will unleash upon his escape, declaring that carnage awaits. Father, one of us must die. Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage. In the year 1996, a young Cletus Cassady is left in despair as his beloved Francis Barrison is forcibly removed from St. Estes' home for unwanted children and transported to the Ravencroft Institute. During the transfer, Francis unleashes her devastating sonic scream, targeting the young officer Patrick Mulligan. In the chaos, Mulligan fires his weapon, striking Francis in the eye, while his own ear suffers from the backlash of her powerful scream. Unaware that Francis has survived, Mulligan believes he has ended her life as she is taken to Ravencroft, where her extraordinary powers are severely contained. In the modern era, Mulligan has taken on the role of a detective and seeks out journalist Eddie Brock to facilitate a conversation with notorious serial killer Cletus, who is currently incarcerated in San Quentin State Prison. Cletus has made it clear that he will only speak to Eddie. Following their meeting, Eddie's alien symbiote, Venom, cleverly uncovers the location of Cletus's hidden victims, significantly enhancing Eddie's professional reputation. Meanwhile, Eddie receives a call from his former fiancée, Anne Wying, who reveals her engagement to Dr. Dan Lewis, much to Venom's annoyance. Cletus, having been convicted and sentenced to death by lethal injection, extends an invitation to Eddie to witness his execution. During their conversation, Cletus hurls insults at Eddie, which incites Venom to retaliate. In a shocking turn, Cletus bites Eddie's hand, consuming a fragment of the symbiote. Back at home, a heated dispute erupts between Eddie and Venom as the symbiote expresses a desire for greater autonomy to hunt down criminals. Ultimately, Venom makes the decision to abandon Eddie and venture out on its own. As Cletus's execution is set in motion, a crimson symbiote bursts forth, thwarting the lethal injection. This new entity, known as Carnage, unleashes chaos within the prison, liberating inmates and slaughtering guards in its wake. Carnage strikes a deal with Cletus. It will assist him in rescuing Francis from Ravencroft, but only if Cletus helps eliminate Eddie and Venom. Meanwhile, Mulligan pays a visit to Eddie, warning him of the escalating crisis. At Ravencroft, Cletus successfully rescues Francis, and together they head to the Saint. Estes Children's Home with plans to set it ablaze. Suspicion grows in Mulligan, leading to Eddie's arrest. In a desperate move, Eddie reaches out to Anne, his lawyer, revealing that Venom has detached from him. As Venom traverses San Francisco, jumping from one host to another, Anne discovers him linked to Mrs. Chin and persuades him to reconcile with Eddie. Venom ultimately reunites with Eddie after briefly bonding with Anne to infiltrate the police station, allowing them to escape custody. In a dramatic turn, Cletus takes Mulligan captive while Francis seizes Anne, bringing them both to Grace Cathedral, where Cletus and Francis intend to tie the knot. Eddie and Venom gear up for an epic showdown against Carnage, but the stakes rise when Francis appears to eliminate Mulligan by hanging him with a chain. In a fierce battle, Carnage gains the upper hand against Venom, who cleverly taunts Francis into unleashing her powers, successfully severing the bond between Carnage and Cletus. In a dramatic turn, Venom consumes Carnage, leading to Cletus's demise, while the crumbling cathedral ultimately falls upon Francis. However, in a surprising twist, Mulligan is revealed to be alive, his eyes glowing with a mysterious blue light. Now branded as fugitives, Eddie and Venom opt for a getaway, contemplating their future adventures. In a mid-credits scene, Venom shares with Eddie the symbiote's vast knowledge of alternate universes. Suddenly, a blinding light engulfs them, transporting the duo from their hotel room to a new location where they witness J. Jonah Jameson on TV, revealing Spider-Man's true identity as Peter Parker. Now in the third movie, Venom is ready to fight with the god of symbiotes, Null. So this is for today's folks, we'll be back with Venom 3. Till then, bye bye and take care. Of course. No, what the heck? I'll laugh anyway. <laughs>